Okay, well I'm out here on the bicycle on the Fort Fraser bike trail. And being out on the bicycle is where I get mighty inspired. So I want to tell you the story of two wonderful families and all the ideas that bubble up in my heart. Now when you get an idea, it doesn't mean that it's going to happen or it's going to come to fruition. But if you have a staff, if you have a group of people, if you've got a handful of people that are standing by and doing some stuff, but you can put them onto a task that comes from an idea, well, gosh, it might benefit the human family and it might bring fun for the family and friends and the friend group. It might bring some appreciation and some cash flow. So here we go. I got one family with 12 or 13 kids. I got another family with 10 kids. From big, big all the way down to little, little. And as we've been reviewing, the idea of true Ecclesia. Happy Monday. The idea of true Ecclesia is a group of brothers, male human beings, who are funny and honest and candid about their weaknesses and the actual demons that hang around in their atmosphere that those demons don't control them anymore they don't own them but they've been around in their generations and they they have some tendencies and whatever true ecclesia is some good friends knit together into honesty times. In the words of the omnipresent friend, two or three family men. And that means and all their families and employees and other close friends. That's a really cool thing. Happy Monday. That's a really cool thing. Two or three family men. Now, if you shift back to the first, uh, the second temple age of Judaism, what does the cluster of friends look like? Well, that cluster of friends looked like ten men every morning. Every morning standing together in one place in order to speak some positive blessing wor words over the entire human family and a few other things ten men who are of reproductive age and when Jesus says now when two or three of you are gathered together see these people have been told by the leaders look until you get 10 men standing in one place, your prayer is not valid. That's called a quorum, a number of people necessary to make good and come in agreement with a statement or a contract. And a prayer to bless the world is a contract. It's literally making a declaration with the invisible realm and the visible realm in order to benefit the living people. So, I mean, nobody taught me this stuff. And nobody repetitively teaches these things. And they're interesting. I mean, Jesus is surrounded by Jews who are like, Hey, you guys, and you guys are praying, and how come you don't have enough people together? Well, 
Jesus is living on one bank account with 12 guys. Hmm. That's interesting. That's almost like 10 guys and Father and the Holy Spirit. That's very interesting. For three years. All right, so anyhow. Some of the comments that I've heard have been very encouraging and some have had longing and disappointment in them. One mom says, gosh, I really wish my kids could have the scholarship that they need. I feel like I'm deficient. And a mother says, I wish that my children could have the singing and music ability that some other families have. I feel sad because we don't seem like a musical family. And another mother says, I really want to help and do things with God, but I'm not quite sure what to do. Well, all of that stuff just plain inspires me. It's getting noisy here because I'm up by the road. All that stuff inspires me because I'm a vocal coach and a song leader. I come from five generations of teachers. As a matter of fact, one of my evil demons I call the teacher spirit because I'm so into learning details and sharing details that sometimes I just talk too darn much. And people have said to me, hey, you talk so much and you don't let other people, you don't stop and let other people talk. Or people don't want you to come back to our house or our neighborhood because you talk too much. That really makes me feel sad and ashamed that I can't put a cap on and have discernment on how much I should be talking. And on the other hand, Jesus is talking so much that he's in a house and surrounded by people talking, talking, talking and his family is saying, he's out of his mind, he's nuts. He's got all these people around him and he just keeps talking and talking. And Acts chapter 2, with many other words, Peter explained stuff. And 3,000 people got baptized on the first day. With many other words, and then... Paul, he's talking all the way into the wee hours of the night and a guy falls asleep and falls out the darn window and they're afraid he's dead. And he comes back, he gets up. So talking a lot is actually slightly a mark of the truth speaker and the one who's sent around in order to talk. Now, I'm a person who hated Christianity, thought it was stupid, was in it for 14 years of my youth, and I left because I felt like there was something wrong, something fake, there was something missing, and I couldn't put my finger on it. I couldn't, and I wasn't, wasn't about to go to the big hotshot Methodist pastors and say, listen, I really feel inside like there's something wrong and there's missing stuff. And I don't know what it is. Do you guys know what it is? I mean, I didn't have the chutzpah, the balls. That's what the word chutzpah means in Hebrew. I didn't have the balls to ask, you know, 
big important pastor guy. And I was sad because I noticed that the kids on the street who didn't do no church whatsoever, they were just the same as far as conscience and behavior as the kids that went to church. And I felt like we should have something special because all this Jesus stuff is so out of the ordinary and special. So I was bewildered and uncomfortable with Christianity a long time ago. And I basically ended up turning into an anti-Christian, anti-religious, you know, friends don't let friends become Christians. Don't let them brainwash you into that small-minded, goody-two-shoes thing. And that's interesting. That's very interesting. Because now... I have finally discovered how to present the goodies, the Jesus goodies, in a marvelous, ecstatic, like, oh my gosh, this is actually how things work and how things come out smoothly. Now, I was a surprise pregnancy, an unplanned pregnancy, and literally a cursed pregnancy and conception in outrageous adultery. Like a sexual interaction against a marriage. And I was adopted in the womb, and my parents didn't know how to cope with talking about my conception. And I didn't realize it, but it took almost 40 years. That became the first job in my life. How to talk about unexpected pregnancy in a fun, cheerful way that literally leads up to a desire to make a marriage covenant with somebody and a desire to pay the bride price. That's a whole story. The female human being The female human being is so amazingly valuable and she is seen by the spirits through connection and responsibility of care of male human beings. Father, brother, uncle, grandfather. And then traded almost like a baseball player into the team of male human being who becomes one flesh friend, husband, sharing the pleasure, sharing the awesome feel good of the body and just caring about one another. Read Song of Solomon. Those people are nuts about each other and they can't wait to get near each other again because it's just plain marvelous. So, anyhow, if there is true functional ecclesia, you have brothers who come together and they talk about their former problems. They work with the details of Song of Solomon where it says, Please, okay, young people, you wonderful young people, I tell you by the beautiful deer who climb up the mountain 
and inspire our hearts. Do not awaken. Do not climb to the mountaintop of the feel-good of the body and the sexual pleasure and the desire and love for somebody to be one flesh. Do not awaken all that powerful stuff until it is time. Now, sometimes people are going to awaken it for you. And sometimes it'll be awakened in a way that you didn't really plan. But the family as a group is actually happy and appreciating the awakening of the feel good. And there's a joy about mommy and daddy getting to spend time together. And God puts this little clause in the family. Hey, when the woman is in her cycle, which has some trouble and pain in it, the whole family blesses her for 14 days every day for 14 days and gives her less stress and less fuss and less interaction. You leave her alone. You give her extra space for 14 days. And... When the male human being who has this irresistible feel-good part of his body, when the male human being has a flow of his blood, of his seed, the family is announced and the guy is treated special by the whole family. 24 hours until the next Sunday. That's pretty cool. The whole family says, hey, we have one body. There's a woman part and there's a man part. And as we're growing up as little kids, the older ones are like, hey, now speak a blessing over your sister because she's really special right now. She's in her flow and blessing time. Hey, you are the seed of a man. Your brother had a flow of seed. Speak something happy over him today. It's his time to be cared about and blessed. And so you grow up understanding that the men are going to flow, the women are going to flow, and the women get extra care, attention, blessing, and goodness. That's a really nice thing. It really, really is. So, an academy. That's just a fun place to learn things. One of these Nido families is in an area that's called College Hill, way out in the farm country. And it's called College Hill because there's this neat old one-room schoolhouse, community house, that's sitting there empty. But over ages... It was the learning place. People would come together there to study and learn and get books and neat stuff happened there. They even have a list of all the teachers and classes and stuff. And so, I'm a song leader. Ta, 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 ta. Ta. And I was trained in being bold with some pitch. I didn't start out that way. I mean, I had a little bit of singing. But man, I got coached. I got trained. It was a fun workout. And we were told, sit next to somebody with good pitch and bend the sound of your voice to match theirs. 
and take a ride on their good pitch. That's legal. That's a good thing. That's a good way to train your voice. And it's not complicated, and it's very friendly. You sing and sing and sing, and you look over at your friend, and you sing louder right in their face, and you just plain get used to singing. It's a nice part of life. Hey. And so, singing and learning, I mean, I'm a librarian. I love to find marvelous books. And man, I'm telling you, in the past 28 years, when I came into stopping rejecting churchianity and going in there and snooping around and seeing what those people actually do for the first time since I was about 14, Gosh, I bumped into some amazing writers and teachers and stuff like that. And I took some crazy notes and I learned and I went places to see these teachers in person and to listen to what they had to say. 28 years of independent study. Just me. Just me following the bunny trail of powerful information. And so, hey, let's read the community rule out of the Damascus document. Let's listen to an audio recitation of Justin Martyr's first apology, Justin the Philosopher. Writing writing beautiful stuff. It's a great thing, man. It's mighty beautiful. It's glorious and peaceful. So, an academy An atmosphere of vocal coaching and teaming up some kids that don't, don't sing much with other kids and adults that do sing a lot and having special expeditions to businesses, to factories, to special teachers of skills and crafts and also expeditions to the islands on the Gulf of Mexico and the beautiful sailing waters of the Atlantic and many other types of expeditions. How about paddling the entire Peace River from Lake Hancock all the way down to Charlotte Harbor and Punta Gorda? These are the types of things that I want to be doing everywhere once people start coming in agreement with true Ecclesia. Now there's nothing wrong with a church building type of church. But there is something wrong. There's something missing. For 300 years, the disciples met only in homes. And the first work was cleansing our consciences and staying aware of the demons that can attach to us just because we're hanging out with a person who invites a certain kind of darkness into their life we can end up starting to respond and do and think like that person. That's why music and movies and many other things are interesting, but they can actually affect our thoughts 
and we can end up coming up with making decisions in <laughs> what you might call a dumb direction or an actual anti-God, a death direction. So we come together in our homes before communion to keep an eye on each other and admit those things that we're worried about and to check in on the people who are walking single like Jesus and the people who are married, the married people. Come on, tell me true. Brothers, what have you not been doing for your wife and your children? How would you say your wife is kind of frustrated about something? And it's the men's responsibility constantly to make comments about these things. Because in your homes, the women and the children will admit their own personal faults and troubles, and you can get her a picture of the kind of stuff that is fooling around with your house because of the things, the practices, because of the behavior of the women and the children. And this is fun stuff. This is how to just stay okay. You have, because you have a group of friends, you can stay okay. We are friends of Christ. He is with us in person in the communion.